The Epic Family Road Trip. Good morning. It is now day five of the build. It is Friday, the last day until next week that we're going to be working. As you can see, we got the winch all set up on the bumper. Almost everything is wired in. Today is the big day that we get all the suspension on finally. So we're going to lift the Jeep, get that going. We don't have the new tires and wheels yet. So over the weekend till uh, Monday, it's going to be Ray's just sitting there waiting for that stuff to come in. But also today we're getting our long range America fuel tanks. These uh, auxiliary fuel tanks are one of the things we're also most excited for to see how they'll be in both Jeeps. That's something that happens fairly often where we have to use the back gas now that we're going full time with just the Jeeps. You gotta fill up all the time and having an auxiliary fuel tank is going to extend our range um, like crazy. It'll make it so much nicer and give us that real peace of mind while on the trail. So big day in store, it's gonna be epic. Right now we've got about 90% of the work done outside of the vehicle, but underneath everything is still straight up stock. You can see the main gas tank here. Today we're getting the Long Range America auxiliary gas tank put in. It should go in here somewhere. It's going to be epic once it's in. And then on top of that, all of the suspension is going in and we're going to take the tires off and wait for the new tires to come in. with Justin and we're going to talk about the long range American spare fuel tank or the auxiliary tank install so you get an idea of what it's like to install so what uh, what are some of the steps you go through uh, it's pretty straightforward install it's using a lot of the space that's not being occupied by anything in the Jeep in the front you are going to have two brackets you'll add it'll both end with a factory cross member for the fuel tank here and then it'll clamp the frame um, it'll actually be the front support for the tank Mm -hmm. um, and the center cross member, there's one stud that's hanging down from the factory. It's got a 12 millimeter nut on it. You actually have to cut that stud off. You got to really allow the tank to set all the way up against the cross member. There'll be one bolt on the side here that goes into that cross member. And then at the rear, it'll bolt into the factory cross member here with the bracket that's already welded onto them. You do have three skin plates. You have one that goes over the exhaust here, the long section of the exhaust here, and on the corner of the tank here, you oh, have three skin plates. Okay. So what that's going to do is keep from heating that tank up on your driveway right. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the install from the filler, um, let me grab this piece over here. There will be a section of hose that you will cut out um, and where it's going to be is directly up above the axle. So what you'll have is this will actually come from the factory tank yep. and it'll go to the filler in the body. So you measure over 51 millimeters, uh, about an inch and a half from this bracket. You'll cut it and have a replacement that makes this into a T. So it has a shutoff valve, so you'll fill, it'll fill the auxiliary tank. Once the auxiliary tank's, it's got a shutoff in it, so it'll actually shut the tank off, and then it'll push all the fuel into your primary system. Um, you do have to, you'll have to tie into the EVAT system. On the side of the tank here, there is a clip. Okay. Um, you'll replace this hose, it runs out here to the outer fender. Um, you'll replace that, and you'll put a 90 in on a rubber hose, and then you'll run that over at the top of the tank, and it allows venting. For so, both of them. So you've got the air and everything like that. So right, um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, if you've ever done any type of auxiliary tanks, then you're going to know everything you got to do for it. These probably could be done in your driveway, but I'd highly recommend it. I wouldn't. <laughs> it could be done in the driveway. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you'll, you'd test fit it three or four times. When you're setting the brackets, um, when you're lining up your hose and stuff like that for the fill tank, um, you do have to fit, to fit it three or four times, and if you ever try to fight a, a gas tank out from under a vehicle in your driveway, it's not a fun task. You want some equipment. <laughs> you want some and, equipment. and you want it done right. You want yep. uh, If it's going to be a backup in case of emergencies when you run out, you want to make sure the thing works. So go to Expiration Outfitters and get it done properly. <laughs> Come see us. How about the electronics on it? Or electronics, um, it's pretty straightforward, super simple. Um, you do tie into a, you have a pump that'll mount here on the frame rail, and that's actually gonna pull from your filler that runs down in the tank here, and it will pump into the Y. It's already tapped with threads, so you'll actually fill it, pump back into the factory filler, 
and it's on the main tank side, so it'll plug under the main tank. Um, on the inside, you actually have the gauge here. You will have a, f a fuel gauge. It'll show you your levels as well as this button. When it's hooked in, you push that button. It'll actually turn on the pump. It'll pump over into your primary tank from the secondary. Um, comes with a standard harness with it. Um, all you have to do is hook two powers. A power to the sending unit on the auxiliary tank, a power to the pump. The pump already comes with a ground tab, so you just ground that one on the frame. Yep. Um, and then on the inside, you're going to use an ignition power system. So that oh. way the key has to be on in order for the auxiliary pump to turn on. I see. That way if the key's off and you bump the button, then it's not running all night or something like that. That makes sense. So pretty straightforward install on the next one. Nice. So that's uh, the Long Range America fuel auxiliary tank, which is going to be a game changer for us. It's going to let us uh, get a lot more range. And uh, go to longrangeamerica.com. We're going to put the links in the description for you. And uh, I think if you're doing overlanding and you're going to go for long hauls, you want one of these. Absolutely. So on the way here from San Angelo, I was riding in the Jeep with Caroline and she was editing a video, but she mentioned at least three times, man, I wish we had our guitar. I wish we had a guitar. Now we left our guitars back at the island because we just didn't have enough space. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna buy one of those backpacking guitars and surprise her. So uh, today we're opening boxes of gear for the Jeep build and another box came in from FedEx. And so we, gave it to her to open and she had no idea that what was inside but um, she just thought it was another piece of something for the Jeep so we caught it on camera it's pretty pretty funny she was quite emotional <laughs> what is it there's a surprised girl uh, we're getting all kinds of Jeep parts so this is probably the best one for her Check it out. <laughs> There's something in there. It's a bag. Oh my goodness. Is that a good thing? Oh my goodness. Ooh. That looks nice. Real deal. Before getting to work on the new suspension, rims, and tires, Justin from Exploration Outfitters gave us a quick lesson on how to change a tire in the shop. Those tires in stock form. Uh, Jack, you need your tire tool. Y'all have the locking lugs, as soon as your key, and then if you take the spare off the rear, you'll need your toolkit because it has a lock on there, so it locks the spare on the rear. So today we'll just go over the simple, simple situation of breaking loose lug nuts, um, but it should be torqued to 105 pounds. You'll use your tire tool. You can do the four this way with the tire tool. When it comes to the locking lug, you'll see it has a pattern inside. Mm -hmm. It'll fit on there, and then you'll use the lug wrench to break the lug down. <laughs> you got it. That's the easy part of breaking the lug nuts loose. Um, what it's going to do is it breaks that torque off the lug nuts. Now, once you jack it up, they'll be broke free, and you can use some must time remove them by hand. If not, use a lug wrench uh, to be able to remove them. So, next, we want to use the jack. We want to jack the front axle. So, you want to go underneath the front axle. Um, the lowest point on there on this side for it like one side at a time. So usually I'll place it right underneath the control arm mount here. Take it from the control arm. You'll have the hook. You'll be able to hook it in there. You can use the extension. And then if you grab your lug wrench, it actually slides over here and it'll create a handle. Oh nice. And raise the jack up. And here you can check your lug nuts if we broke them loose enough. You can move them all by hand if they're still tight. So you can place your leg against the tire. And at this point, um, if you've been running on them for a while and they got a lot of miles, they've heated up. Sometimes they won't move like it fell. Mm. It'll stay attached. All you gotta do is bump it at the bottom, bump it at the top, and it'll jar it. And it'll let that wheel come off. And at that point, the wheel's de detached. Put it back on, just reverse the process. Um, you know, if you had a flat, you pull the spare from the rear. Um, same process. There's three bolt, three lug nuts on the back of it. Pull those three, bring it around, put it on, set the Jeep, Jeep back down, and then put the spare back on the back mm -hmm. tire. It's, it's, gonna be One person. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but it's easier. See, so come down here, use your legs to pick it up, get 
get licked in the ear, and <laughs> you can use your legs to pick it up, and then you can position it. Nice. Especially once you get into doing 35s and 37s, a lot heavier wheel and tire. Right. So you always want to hand thread them on to make sure they start. Um, you'll see a lot of tire shops, stuff like that, they will run them on with the impact. That's when you take a chance on cross threading them and stuff like that. Mm. So if you always want them in by hand, you know the threads are good on them. If you're out um, on the road doing it, you could have someone hold the brakes. That way the brakes will hold it. Tap them down. Uh, have someone stand here and hold the wheel. Just so you snug them up. And at this point you can let it down and you go back and you can actually retorque all the wheels and everything like that. When we were finished, we got to catch up with one of our favorite overlanders, Clay Croft from X Overland, who stopped by the shop. We then got to work, installing our new ARB Old Man Emu BP-51 suspension. What we're doing is putting an Old Man Emu by ARB suspension and it's a four and a half inch lift as well as a much beefier suspension. So you're going to see some shocks that are a lot bigger than that, some coils that are a lot, can handle a lot more weight. Because as you know, we put weight on these things. We need a tent going up, kitchen in the back. So. Heavy duty. Oh yeah, a lot bigger than this guy. Heavy duty. Yeah. This is the replacement shock. So these are your replacement shots. These are the BP-51s uh, with remote reservoir. So that's, that's what this is? This is your reservoir, so this is for your fluid. So while that strut's moving up inside, the shaft's moving in and out, okay. it's pushing that fluid and it actually gives you a reservoir to where it's not oh. all internally anymore. And this is all your adjusters, so while y'all are out on the trails and stuff, you'll have to figure out your rebound and everything, kind of where you, how you want the suspension set up. Um, a lot of people have a set suspension while driving yeah. down the highway, and they have a set suspension for when they're off-roading. Oh, okay. So it's just something you'll have to play with. And it's with. just a matter of twisting it yep. back to the Yep, it's got spot. a wrench with it, and it'll come with it, and you can just crank it kind of, nice. kind of play with it, figure out how y'all want when y'all are on the trails. And if you say you're hitting a lot of cor corduroy roads or something, you can actually go back, make an adjustment yep. for that. So if yep. you're, uh, it's as simple as just pulling over, getting the wrench out, cranking it how you need it, wow. and you'll be able to get back on the road. And you do the same on all four all of them. Four. Yeah. So your fronts and rears, um, Probably be a little different, right. um, and it also depends on how you have it. If weight you have, you know, so a little more weight on this side of the rack, this right, this side might be set a little different than the passenger oh. side. Wow, that's a nice feature to have. Uh, gives you lots of flexibility. Something we've run into a lot, you know, is just depending on the conditions you're in, depending on where your load is, weight it's distribution, a lot of weight distribution. Top vehicles. Yeah, exactly. Good. That's gonna be a great feature. So what's that little bracket there? That's. So this is shock? just a, yeah, it just kicks the shock out since you're using the much bigger shock with the BB-51s, you've got to get past the sway bar. So it's just got a small bracket that kicks it out. Bolts into the factory housing with the spacer in there, bolts into your factory sway bar, and then that, there's a shock housing out a little bit so it'll clear. This is an ex extension as well? Yep, or? that is extended. It's in links. Oh, yeah. This is, is this a spacer you got on Yep, here? so this is an extension for the bump stop. Um, that way if you do load it heavy or whatever, no, I, it won't bottom out on your wheels and stuff and the fenders and stuff like that. Right. And, and the total lift, uh, once this is all in, is going to be four and a half? Yes. So this little piece had to come out of there to make room for the new, the bigger shocks? Yep. 5051 is the reservoirs that sit right where the plastic is going to sit. So we just trim it out so the reservoir will fit right in there. Let's go put it on and see how it looks. Looks good. Yep. So with that trimmed out piece, it'll allow the actual moat and the reservoir to sit up in here. It doesn't rub or anything like that. All right. Another thing we just got put in, they just came in today and we already put them on, is the Cargo Massive Safari uh, door steps. We have used these things. It's probably one of the most used things other than like engine and tires on Vandy. Um, we 
You use them all the time to grab bags, put stuff up on the rack, to open up the tent. That's every morning and night, even if it's just for the tent, we're using it twice a day, and we are often using it for just about everything else. So, one more thing that's pretty awesome on there, silver bolts. We're probably gonna get black bolts or paint these ASAP. But uh, other than that, they're beauty, really great things. Final step of the day was to put on our new Milestar Patagonia mud terrain tires. 35s, 37s. 35s are going on bandy. So this, these tractor tires here are big 37s. These are going on the new Jeep. Uh, we gotta get a name for that Jeep because it's hard calling it the new Jeep. Anyway, the white Jeep is getting these big 37 Milestar Patagonias. So we have now 10 big tires here. So five of them are going on the new Jeep. They're the 37s and then the 35s go on Vandy. We didn't want to put 37s on her because these are already gonna be huge. These are already huge for it and that's what the whole suspension's designed for. So it's gonna look good. If you look over here, we've worn out our uh, tires. Pretty good. Basically done now. Wow, I love that lift. That's so cool. Is that <laughs> hold down on the yeah. spring? If the lift's still up, it'll settle some. Yeah. It'll settle down a little bit. That's cool. <laughs> And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road.